Edge Case Fitness. It's Tuesday, and you know what that means? It's time for Perpetual Motion the class where we never stop moving. And wow, I am glad that it's a new week. Because <laughs> last week was rough. Last week was very, very rough. I'm proud of all of us for making it through. Uh, I am very thankful to all of you for understanding the uh, switch ups, shall we say, in programming. And uh, yeah, I am very, very glad that it's a new week, which obviously like new week does not mean that all of the problems have disappeared. And in fact, we started the week with all new ones because there's some pretty horrifying anti-trans legislation making its way through uh, Arkansas, I think it is. Um, but, uh, you know, I feel a little bit more equipped to deal with it. And that is a very good thing. So hello, welcome. Welcome back to the stream. Um, there is going to be, uh, unfortunately and unexpectedly, uh, another uh, shakeup in this week's schedule because I have my first vaccine appointment on Friday. <laughs> Holy crap. Um, yeah, yeah, that is just absolutely wild to me and it's kind of mind-blowing and unfortunately the appointment is uh, up in a part of the state that's about two hours away um, and it's late afternoon so I will not be able to make it home in time to uh, to stream on Friday and quite frankly will want to make sure that I am leaving myself room to recuperate um should i experience any of the uh any of the uh, uh side effects of the vaccine that some people have been experiencing so um there will be no stream on friday and possibly no stream on saturday either depending on how i'm feeling um or i may run stream on saturday morning but uh not do class that that honestly will probably end up being what I do if I'm feeling, uh, unless I'm feeling really junk. Um, but yes, holy crap. Uh, wow. I, yeah, I still don't really know how to feel emotionally. Like, well, I know how to feel emotionally. It's just my brain is like, I don't, I don't know if I feel confident enough to, ha to have those feelings yet. So mostly I'm just like, Really? This is really happening? I'm... Really? Okay. I don't know. So, it's gonna be a weird week, my friends. Oh, a very weird week. But I feel incredibly fortunate that this, this is something that I get to kick off. And, you know, two weeks from now, I'll be fully vaccinated, which is also really hard to believe and and really wild and so yeah depend i know we're all sort of all over the place and and lots of different um lots of different qualification criteria and, and states in different parts of their uh, vaccine rollout but if you are eligible please please make sure to get your appointment set up and to go and start the vaccination process um, or, you know, one and done it if you get the Johnson & Johnson. I'm not getting Johnson & Johnson, so I will have two appointments, which means that two weeks from Friday, I will also probably have to cancel stream based on, uh, what time that appointment is scheduled for. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's mind-blowing. I, I truly did not expect that to be a thing uh so quickly and uh yeah wow so <laughs> uh so i'm sorry that we we've had obviously a, a lot of interruptions to streaming schedule um over over this the past couple of weeks and i apologize for that obviously you'll understand what's been going on but uh but yeah wild absolutely wild um but I'll make it up to you because uh, next week we will kick off um, <clears throat> we will kick off our 
April, uh, April ramp up programming, similar to October. I still don't have a pithy name. Um, so I'll, you know, think of something in the next few days, but, uh, Yes, we will be doing another uh, comprehensive full month program, uh, starting starting low and then build, building ourselves up over time uh, in intensity and uh, just sort of getting to see the difference from start to finish, um, which was really exciting back in October and I think will be really cool to do here as well. So, yay! So many things are happening. So many potentially good things. Are happening. Oh man. Oh. I there's at this point I feel like it's psycho psychological. I feel like there's some sort of Pavlovian response that happens when I sit down and I've got the lights going and I've got the stream going that just makes me go, hey, it's time to yawn now. And I'm like, but I'm not actually tired. It's like, nope, yawn time. So who knows? I got nothing. I got nothing. Uh except happiness to be here. You know, I'm, I'm still feeling a little tired, obviously, but um, I'm feeling more grounded than I was. And, uh, and that's really good. And um, I am, uh, I'm doing some additional sort of outside of stream things for my health and fitness, uh, which I've been trying to work into my life and my overall routine for a while. So that's been really lovely. And, and you know, it's Colorado spring, which means hilariously that yesterday was 70 degrees. And this morning I woke up and there was snow on the ground. Um, because Colorado, uh, actually only has two seasons and those seasons are summer and winter and everything else is just those two season seasons smushed together. And, uh, that's, that's all that exists in Colorado. Uh, and sometimes there's, there's pretty foliage to go along with it, but, uh, but yeah, <laughs> it's absolutely wild, absolutely wild. So Oh, all right, my friends. I think it's about time to get started. So, hey, welcome to Perpetual Motion, the class where we never stop moving, also known as the half marathon of hit classes. If this is your first time coming to do this particular stream, we do things a little differently on Tuesdays. Normally, we would get to the end of a workout timer and the final horn would go off and we would go, all right, cool, we're, uh, we're good. We're good to just chill um and stand around and drink some water on tuesdays when we get to the end of that work workout timer and the final horn goes off we instead go immediately into our active rest exercise which in this class is cross jacks i'll demonstrate that when the time comes but this means that from the time that we start the warm-up to the time that the last timer ends we do not stop moving the entire class. As a caveat, I will stop moving in between things um, because I am the teacher and, and have a few additional demands on my overall cardiovascular system. But I will do, mo I will do the entirety of the uh, intervals with you. But, uh, but for y'all taking this workout at home, once you start that warm up, you are moving for the entire hour until the end of that final timer, okay? Which means that today, the name of the game is all about stamina and energy usage, all right? So making sure that just as in a half marathon race, we wouldn't go sprinting across the starting line and then, you know, have nothing to get ourselves across the finish line. Uh, it's gonna be the same thing today. So you wanna make sure that above everything else that you are using your energy wisely so that you can continue moving the entire class. All right? Is that right? Is that right? So let's do our pre-class checklist. Hey, have you got your water? Checking. Oh, see what your hydration level is. I, you know, I've been doing pretty well with my hydration the last few days too, so. 
Awesome. Uh, you got your comfy clothes. Whatever that means to you, you've got your mat or mat size space on the floor. And if you use a fitness wearable, let's turn those on to high intensity interval training. There we are. Oh, if you don't use a fitness wearable, that's totally fine. It's not a requirement. It's just something I put in that list because it helps me to remember to turn mine on. Um, but, you know, if it's not a useful tool, I don't recommend getting it. Not everybody wants or needs that degree of data or nudging. And frankly, for mine, I have uh, turned off all of the notifications that uh, it normally would give me so I don't even have to deal with that because they were starting to uh, cause me anxiety that I didn't need and that did not help my overall fitness. So uh, even if you do have a tool like this, you can always mess with it to make sure that it is serving your needs and not the needs that the programmers think that you have. All right. Oh yeah. So we're moving over to our mats and we are getting ready. So remember, uh, I always tell you to not go uh, to 100% right off the bat, but it's particularly important today because once the end of the warm up comes, you do not get to stop moving. You have to go into those cross checks. Oh, and make sure while I'm installing for time, trying to open my timer app, make sure that you put your water bottle in. Uh, a position where you can grab it while standing because cross jacks are in a standing position and you want to be able to grab the water bottle and drink from it without stopping moving, okay? So do that quickly and then join me on your mats, on your backs, one foot crossed over the opposite knee and as soon as that horn goes off, we will begin with hip rocks and bridges, yeah! There we go, so we are off. So this is officially the beginning of an hour long race, not race, uh, but you know, there's a reason why I use imagery from uh, half marathons a lot for this class, because it's the same kind of concept. You know, you're not necessarily uh, running at the same pace the whole time you may, speed up or slow down depending on where you are in the race but your overall goal is to not stop moving the entire time you don't you don't want to have to uh just stop and sit down in the middle of your half marathon it's the same thing for this class so we are really focused first and foremost on just continuing to move for the entirety of class, all right? And uh, if, you're, uh, if, if this is still a new class to you and you're still feeling a little overwhelmed by that particular goal, then just focus on that, all right? You do not have to, uh, you do not have to introduce any other goals. <laughs> you can seriously just go, all right, uh, my focus for today will be moving the whole time and doing the exercise correctly because that's always uh, a focus point for us. But otherwise, I'm not going to worry about, you know, setting PRs. I'm not going to worry about uh, ramping up the intensity of the power and the strength that I'm putting into these. I am just going to focus on moving the entire time. And that is a totally legit goal. And let me tell you, you will get more than enough of a workout if that is your goal. All right. And that's the thing to always keep in mind is, uh, you know, there's a reason why I remind you about the bare minimum all the time because frankly, the bare minimum is still a fantastic workout, okay? And it's, and it's also an important tool. It is important to know that you have that at your disposal, that you are not required 
to subscribe to, uh, you know, constant growth, late stage capitalist model of exercise. You are not required every time you get on the mat or pull on your running shoes or anything like that. You are not required to go, okay, now I have to set another PR. That is not a requirement. Uh, so you, you want to always be listening to your body. You want to always be paying attention to what it needs. And some days it is going to be challenge enough to just focus on the bare minimum. And that is always a perfectly good goal. Okay. So I don't want, I don't care how long you've been taking class with me. All right. I don't care how long it's been. You always, always should feel comfortable and proud with that as a goal. If that needs to be your goal and you've watched me up here exercising for over a year at this point, and you know that sometimes I am having a day where my focus has to be the bare minimum. My focus just has to be getting through. I'm not up here pushing, uh, you know, putting a bunch of new strength or power or speed in anything. I am just focusing on can I continue moving when I'm supposed to be moving, okay? So no matter how long you've been working out, no matter how long you've been taking class with me, that is always an acceptable goal. You should never uh, feel embarrassed or ashamed if you, you know, step on your mat and you're like, I just think that that's what I need to focus on. Um, and if you are brand new to class or coming back to class after a long absence, then I want to emphasize that even more, okay? We are real good at making ourselves feel embarrassed uh, by our very natural human needs for rest or for reduced intensity, okay? And that's how we end up with injuries. And that's how we end up with overtraining, which is a legit condition that I studied about in uh, in my personal trainer textbook, overtraining. I had never heard the term before, but it makes perfect sense. Um, and, you know, when we are trained to ignore the signals that our bodies are sending us, then all of these negative outcomes become that much more likely. All right? So we're all coming out of a really rough week last week and you may absolutely be having a day where you're like oh i'm just feeling really worn out and i feel like what i need to focus on is just you know if i'm able to move for the entirety of class that will be a triumph awesome go you that's a great goal and i support it all righty uh, to, I hammer in on this a lot because I know how good we all are at shaming ourselves and at uh, ignoring our needs in favor of these really harmful models of productivity that have infected almost every facet of human life, which is just so frustrating, but it's a longer lecture than I'm probably going to go on right now. <laughs> But yeah, so always remember your trainer is supporting you in whatever your goal is for today. And if you are just hanging out in chat, but you're like, you know, today needs to be a rest day, I hella support you in that because our rest days are critical. Our rest days are just as important as our exercise days. And, you know, when I'm working one-on-one -on -one with clients, I will generally give them an entire rest week. Um, you know, every, 
Uh, it usually falls out every five to eight weeks. I will give them an entire week that's a rest week. But I can also usually tell the signs that make me go, okay, it's definitely time to give this person a rest week uh, because they're feeling like they're struggling. They're uh, talking about, uh, you know, increased exhaustion and decreased motivation. And those are really good signs to me that, uh, that they need a longer chunk of rest. So I can't, you know, I can't manage all of your rest weeks for you, obviously, while teaching on stream. So I leave it to you to remember that rest days and rest weeks are just as important to your overall exercise as anything that we do in this class, all right? And I want you to make sure that you are paying attention to that and that you're paying attention to how you're feeling in class. And if you're, you know, coming to class and you're feeling really worn down and feeling decreased motivation and like your, uh, your performance feels like it's suffering, then that is probably a nice strong signal that it's time for a rest week, all right? So always, always keep that in mind because we are not good at taking our care of ourselves in that manner. Ugh. Oh man. But it's nice to be here on the mat doing class today. Oh my God. I uh, started watching um, the, uh, <laughs> the notorious at this point uh, Snyder Cut uh, Justice League last night. Only made it through section parts, parts one and two of this four hour magnum opus. And oh my God, that man loves slow mo so much. He's got, he has got a very specific visual style. Absolutely. It involves color correction to a degree that, uh, you know, I remember from a lot of my friends when they were making movies in college, which may or may not be a compliment. It depends on the scene. Uh -huh. But, uh, yeah, I, I never saw the, um, I never saw the shorter version, uh, because I, I, after seeing Batman v Superman, I went, I, you know, I just don't care. And, uh, yeah, hearing all of the shitty things, uh, coming out from that set and about Joss Whedon's, uh, shitty abusive behavior, I'm, uh, more than happy now to have not uh, supported that particular version of the film with any money. But uh, yeah, <laughs> the, thing, the thing that drove me the most crazy, which is hilarious to me, this is, you know, this is like, what a random thing for me to fixate on, but it's the thing that really made me annoyed. Um, the the villain, uh, Steppenwolf, is voiced, clearly not, you know, physically acted by, but is, is voiced by uh, a Shakespearean actor who I adore, Kieran Hines, um, who y'all would know as Mansurator, the King Beyond the Wall from Game of Thrones, but who has been uh, you know, in films um, for decades at this point, and is just a phenomenal actor. But, so first of all, I had no idea that he was in, in this movie until I was literally watching the credits, and I've seen trailers for it before, and you know, 
honest trailers and heard the voice of the of uh, this particular character and never had any idea that it was him and and I'm just like what is the purpose of casting an actor of his caliber in this role and then making him completely unrecognizable you know now that I know it's him I can hear his voice through uh, through the modifications and through the filtering but you know he's not a household voice and he's certainly not a household name and so I'm just like why did you bother casting this top of his craft actor in a role where he is just, he doesn't exist. He's not needed. He didn't need an actor that good to play fucking Steppenwolf, my dudes. Um, uh, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> and I, I really have uh, not been able to make my way past that particular annoyance yet. Because <laughs> I'm like, if you're gonna have this actor in your movie, then I would want to actually be aware that it was him, you know? And not be over here being like, oh yeah, I guess I can uh, hear his voice, you know? which means that he's in this movie for all of two seconds, as far as I can tell, considering how much CG ragdoll action the character is involved in and how little uh, conversation the character is involved in. <sighs> so it just, really, really bugged me. Uh, so thank you for letting me vent about, about something so silly. Uh, Cause uh, yeah, it was annoying. All right, we are in our final interval. So remember, when that timer goes off, we do not stop moving. We instead immediately begin cross jacks, okay? So our active rest, active in the sense that we don't stop moving, but rest in the sense that we use that time to bring our heart rate down, bring our breathing down, all right? So, these are cross jacks, so similar to uh, similar to jumping jacks. Jump the feet out, jump them in, one foot crossed in front of the other, out and in, switch the feet. Same thing with the arms. You can also modify by doing the arms and just kicking the feet forward, or you can just do a a side to side jog, but make sure you keep moving. Hey, all right. Oh, yeah. You worked with him? Dang it. You worked with him? Oh, he's one of my favorite actors. Absolutely. I was just so annoyed. I was like, really? There was no point in casting this fantastic actor in this, like, completely unimportant role. Like, I know he's the main villain, but the villains in these things are so rarely actually important. It's like, oh yeah, another giant burly CG dude whose only goal is to kill and conquer. And they didn't even put in the work to make the CG face realistically expressive. Like, Thanos is obviously it, you know, 99% CG, but they put a lot of work into making that face and the expressions 
as realistic as possible. And they did not do that with Steppenwolf. Mm. All right, so y'all are cross-jacking away. Oh my God. Uh, you're ridiculous, but also yes. Um, okay, so we are going to do, uh, we're gonna do one of the completely guided uh, intervals. And I'm not gonna be hitting the beat because I'm gonna be trying to do the exercises with you, but I will still be calling out the rhythm. So you've done this before with me. We've got two exercises, our squat jumps and our toe squats. So squat jumps, taking our feet between hip and shoulder width apart, squatting down to maybe 45 degrees, and then jump, 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 like that. And then toe squats, feet hip width apart, keeping our backs straight up and down as straight as possible as we start to squat down. And then when we can't go any further, letting the heels come up and going all the way down and then back up. So I am going to be calling out the rhythm that we move on this. We're gonna do it for two minutes and I'm not gonna be hitting that rhythm out, but I will be calling it out, okay? So you're still going to hear it, all righty? So everybody, you're cross-tracking away, okay? And you're not getting prepped and just standing in position. You are cross-jacking until it is time to do your first squat jump, all right? So keep that in mind. Everybody get ready. And five, and six, and here we go. And jump, and jump, and jump, and jump, and jump. Toe squats down, two, and up. Two and down, two and up, two and down, two and up, two and down, two and back, two jumps and jump and jump and jump and jump and jump. And jump. Toe squats down, two and up, two and down, two and up. Two and down, two and up, two and down, two and back, two jumps and jump and jump and jump and jump and jump. And jump. Toe squats down, two and up, two and down, two and up, two and down, two and up. Two and down, two and back, two jumps and jump and jump and jump and jump and jump. And jump. Toe squats down, two and up, two and down, two and up, two and down, two and up, two and down. Two and last time through and jump and jump and jump and jump and jump. Toe squats down, two and up, two and down, two and up, two and down, two and up, two and down, two and back to cross jacks. Oh man. All right, keep cross checking. Let me tell you, I, uh, I've not actually done that with you before. Uh, Cause I've always just been hitting out the rhythm. And uh, yeah, that's intense, which is good. It was supposed to be, but boy howdy. It takes on a different feeling. This is why it's so exciting to actually do more of class with you all, because uh, it just reminds me of how awesome you are. Uh, you are kicking ass today, my friends. All right. Mm -hmm. Now I know 
Will it change anything about how I teach? Nah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let's do a perpetual motion set. <sighs> and uh, nope, that's not the direction I was trying to go. There we are. Okay. So I've been really liking the sets with just two exercises where we're going back and forth between them. I think that provides us a nice bit of variety, but also a nice opportunity to focus on what we're doing. So let's do a perpetual motion set, 45 second work interval. Obviously no rest interval. And first exercise is going to be uh, bicycles. So from your back, contract those abdominal muscles to lift your chest and shoulders off the ground. One knee into your chest, the other leg extended but off the ground. Opposite elbow to knee, then switch. And just going back and forth, all right? So that is our first one. And then our second one is going to be side plank from the elbow. So each time you're gonna to have to alternate which arm you use to make sure that you do, uh, that you even your arms out. So side plank, we've got our shoulder directly over our elbow, creating that nice perpendicular line, extending the legs all the way out. We lift the hip up towards the ceiling, other arm towards the ceiling, and we just hang, all right? So those are our two exercises, bicycles and side plank from the elbow. So everybody's on your mat, cross jacking away. Remember, you don't get to get into position until there, okay? So one of the big pieces of this class is making sure that you know exactly how you're gonna transition from one exercise to the other so that you can minimize the amount of time that it takes you to get from the exercise you are currently doing to the exercise that you want to start doing next, all right? And uh, I talk about that basically every time <laughs> That we do this class, so I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna focus on it too long. But yeah, you always want to know what you're doing. All right. So for our side planks, some things to think about from a form perspective. You want to make sure that your shoulder is really engaged and is pushing upwards. Okay. So you're not sinking down into that shoulder joint. This is an opportunity for us to strengthen and stabilize from the shoulder. So visualization tricks that can help. Imagining that you have a string attached to your hip going up to the ceiling and it's pulling your hips up that whole time, okay? Obviously we'll talk more about it as we come back around to it. But visualization is a really great tool uh, for, you know, all movement, but particularly when we have held exercises. Held exercises can be some of the most intense ones because we are, uh, we're not getting the, distraction and the variation of movement, you know? We are just having to stay in this one position the whole time. And that can be really intense and it can feel a lot harder to maintain. So whatever visualization tricks you can use can be invaluable to helping yourself, helping to ground yourself 
in the exercise. So yeah, a thread from your hip going up towards the ceiling and maybe one from the fingertips as well uh, for the hand that's reaching up and just imagining that there is a puppet master up there who is uh, tightening those strings and helping to keep you in that position. All right? Okay. Third time through, I believe. Remember, of course, we are alternating our, uh, our, our side plank arm each time. And remember, too, that I am not always uh, getting into position for the next exercise in the most efficient way because I have an added criteria where I need to be facing the camera. So you do not have to mimic what I'm doing because frequently I am taking a little extra time to make sure that I'm still oriented towards y'all. All right, so if, if you're watching me shift into the next exercise and you're like, that seems like a, a, weird, a weirdly uh, not efficient way to get into that exercise, well, you're probably right, okay? Whew. Yeah, another really useful tool in held exercises that I wish I got to uh, use more on this stream, but I don't because I'm talking the whole time, is your breath. Uh, making sure that you are getting enough oxygen to help run your fuel production cells uh, so that your muscle fibers are getting all of the energy that they need to be able to manage this really intensive movement. Because health positions are still really intense workouts for your muscles. Your muscles aren't just chilling. Your muscles are really heavily engaged and working and they still need that oxygen in order to run the fuel production systems and make sure that you are getting all of the additional energy that you need to do class. So make sure that you're breathing, nice deep breaths, and not holding your breath. All right, back up and into those cross jacks. Oh. Woo! Good job, everybody. Holy crap. Man, held side planks, also intense. <laughs> uh, obviously, I know that none of you have any particular sympathy for me, and that's okay. I just want to express to you that I understand the intensity of what I am having you do. And uh, yeah, you should be proud of what you're able to accomplish in this class, because it's no joke. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. What are we gonna do next? We are gonna do another one of those uh, 45 second work interval sets, I believe, two new exercises. Um, one, uh, exercise is going to be uh, lunge to the hand or elbow because we haven't done that in a while. So we take a leg back similar to the Samson stretch in the warm up. Nice deep lunge, feeling that opening up your hip flexor. And then one of three things down to the hand, down to the hand, and then roll down to the elbow or Bypass the hand and just go straight down to the elbow. And then stand up to that front foot, back 
back to the other side and repeat and just go back and forth, okay? So we will do uh, those stretches. So lunge to the hand or elbow. And then you know what? We're gonna do jumping jacks. Uh, so I want you to do a fuller version than we do in the warm up. The warm up we do a bare minimum version. So for this, I want a bigger jump. And if you have the ability to keep your arms straight and do the full range of motion, go for it. If you have shoulder issues, uh, you can decrease the range of motion impact on your shoulders by keeping a bend in your elbows. You'll see me do that because you'll know uh, that I have shoulder stuff. So yeah, that is absolutely a modification option. So there we go. Lunge to the hand or elbow and then jumping jacks. So we're doing our cross jacks. We're chilling. And as soon as we hear that horn, we go into this stretch. All right. Remember, almost every exercise, uh, whether I remember to tell you this or not, and I frequently do, can be benefited with core engagement, even if it is not a, an exercise that is focused on your core. Okay, so when we're doing something like this, core engagement can help us to stabilize all of the moving parts so that we can stand up to that front leg more effectively. Uh, when we're doing jumping jacks, where we have all of our limbs moving away from the center line and then trying to come back to it, Having our core engaged helps to pull all of that back together, okay? So always remember to check in on your core, even if it is not a core-focused exercise, it is still more likely than not going to benefit from core engagement, okay? Even something as simple as these jumping jacks. Whew. All right. And then we go back into our nice lunges. And we have the opportunity to slow down our breathing a little bit, slow down our heart rate. So we're, uh, we're almost incorporating an active rest exercise into this particular timer, you know, because we go from the much more cardio focused jumping jacks into these nice, deliberate, long lunges, okay? So always pay attention to those, uh, those different factors and the different types of exercises that we are alternating between. And find the places where you can uh, rest, for lack of a better term, you know? Uh, it's similar to when you're rock climbing and your arms are starting to get tired, rather than continuing to muscle your way up the wall, you can find a handhold that you're able to hang on to and take a second to rest a little bit. And you're obviously still working muscles because you need to have your hand gripping the hold and you need to keep your, uh, your pelvis into the wall. So it's not a full rest, but it is an opportunity to let one uh, system. Uh, all right, that was our horn into our jumping jacks. Sorry, an alarm went off. Uh, you're, you're still getting an opportunity to reduce the load 
on a particular system, okay? So we want to do the same thing here. We want to use our slower, more deliberate exercises as an opportunity to reduce the load on our overall systems, okay? And that helps us to manage our energy over the course of class, which obviously, given the fact that it's an hour long class and we're moving the whole time, is really important, okay? So, yeah. Always try and identify those rest points, even if they're not what you would traditionally think of as rest, even if they still require movement and activation of different muscles, they can still be used as rest, all right? And it's important to pay attention to that. Oh, all right. Here we are, our last one, I believe, and then back to good old cross jacks. Remember, we do have modifications for the cross jack, so if you get out of the uh, jumping jacks and you're like, oh my God, I need something a little more different, then you can feel free to do a modified version. <sighs> All right. And do not forget to drink water. <sighs> that was the whole point of making sure that your water bottle was in a place where you could reach it from a standing position, right? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh yeah. You have to be more careful when you're uh, drinking water in today's class because you're still moving around. You do not get to stop moving and stand there to drink your water. You do still want to be doing your cross jacks, all right? So again, digging into that half marathon approach, remembering how to awkwardly but successfully drink water while moving and not letting it go down the wrong pipe and into your lungs, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Woo! Mm. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now, we're going to do another, another perpetual motion. And uh, I think for this one, first exercise uh, is going to be that, uh, that stationary bear crawl position we've done in one class so far. So starting basically from uh, downward dog and then pushing forward until shoulders are directed over wrists and knees are almost to the ground but not on the ground. And then pushing back here and forward. Okay, so I'm not dropping my knees to the ground. You're keeping them at least an inch off the ground at all times and you're going to need a lot of engagement in those shoulders. Fun stuff, fun stuff. And then second exercise is going to be boat rocks. So we start from that nice pike position but contracting. So I'm going to contract my abdominals to round out my lower back. And then I will keep that contraction so that I can roll onto my back and then back up to that balance, all right? But you need to make sure, be checking in 
Make sure your abs are still engaged the whole time, all right? Is that right? So, bear crawl and boat rocks. Lots of bees. Uh, da, da, da. Oh. Okie dokie. And remember, of course, we have to go from cross jacks. There we go. So, if this is your first time doing this particular exercise, you know, you don't have to go for speed. Uh, you want to get a sense of your overall positioning in all parts of the exercise. You want to make sure your shoulders are engaged, your core is engaged, that core engagement is really helping to keep those knees off the ground, okay? And then the nice, strong, stable shoulders help to push you back into that downward dog, all right? And now for our boat rocks. So if you are someone who struggles with, uh, with the shrimps that we do frequently, this is a great exercise to start with uh, because you get the sense of the momentum that you need for the exercise, but you also don't have to uh, actively include all of the isolation that goes into moving your shoulders and your hips separately, okay? So the boat rock, is absolutely what I uh, what I give people as a modification if you're struggling with shrimps. So whenever you're doing a boat rock, basically just visualize in your head. Okay, so to turn this into a shrimp, I would want to make sure that every time my shoulders came off the ground. I moved them in the direction I was traveling. And every time my hips came off the ground, I moved them in the direction I was traveling. All right. And that gives you, uh, gives your brain the uh, opportunity to visualize and imagine what the movement is supposed to feel like and look like, and honestly, our imagination is a really powerful tool, okay? And we don't utilize it enough. Um, so yeah, doing, doing that visualization, doing an exercise that is similar to what you ultimately want to be able to do, and then Imagining what those final components would feel like when fully realized helps to lay the groundwork for the pathways in your brain so that your brain and your body can figure out what's supposed to be happening. Uh, and that helps us to, <laughs> that helps us to get uh, the concept of an exercise without performing it badly, you know, because we talk about how important form is uh, and, you know, how that is the foundation of everything that we're doing and how I would rather you do two perfect reps and rest the rest of the time than to pump out 20 reps and have the form be off and set yourself up for injuries down the line, okay? So visualization is a tool that helps us to figure out form without training our body in, in uh, 
correct movement patterns. And that is incredibly useful, okay? All right. Oh, I believe this is our last time. I really love these, uh, these bear crawls. They are such a simple seeming exercise, but you get a lot of muscle engagement and engagement in uh, areas that really benefit from additional strength and stability. <sighs> All right, Herb. So in this fourth and final boat rock, if you are not feeling a lot of intense fatigue in your core muscles, then you have probably not been correctly engaging your core muscles. Let me tell you, boat rocks are an exercise that for a couple of years, I was like, oh, obviously my core is just already strong enough that I just don't get any benefit from this exercise. And uh, what I've learned in the last year is that, yep, that was not at all true. <laughs> I was just not actually engaging my core. So, yeah. Um, whenever we're doing an exercise and you're feeling like you are, uh, you're like, I'm just not getting the sensations that they're describing. Is it, is, you know, is it something about how she's describing it or is, you know, am I just like too far advanced from this exercise? And the answer is usually that you are not activating the correct muscle group for the exercise. Um, and, you know, no judgment, no shame, because obviously I do that too. It took me, it, it literally took, it was a year into my professional life and, you know, 36 years into me being an active human to, uh, to realize that I wasn't really activating my abdominal muscles in a lot of the core focused exercises that I was doing. So yeah, no shame, we all do it. The point is to learn how to identify it more easily and to learn how to correct our form as quickly as we can. And that's our focus. Perfect is the enemy of good, my friends. Mm -hmm. All right. Ah. Uh, you're cross-jacking away, terrified of what comes next. But my friends, no need to be afraid. What comes next is everybody's favorite, calf awareness. Uh, so y'all know what to do. You're gonna follow me on this fun, fun journey. And then at the end of this timer, you get to stop moving, okay? So, we're cross-jacking away, and when the timer goes off, I just want you to balance flat on one foot. Hey, yeah. So, a wonderful opportunity in case you hadn't been able to get your breathing and your heart rate down all the way in the cross-jacks. Now, you can really focus in and be like, all right. I can take those nice deep breaths and just remind my body that it's doing all right. Um, for a balance like this, we want to focus on making all of the adjustments that we need to maintain the balance using only the ankle and the foot, okay? So not waving the other leg around, not doing, you know, tight rope walking arms, anything like that. And so how do we do that? Well, as we switch to the other side, how we do that is by activating our stabilizing muscle group. So starting with the core, again, that brings our torso 
under control into line. Then we tie it in with engaging the quads on the working leg and the glute on the working leg. So basically everything from the knee up is one cohesive piece. And so by the time we get down to the ankle, rather than trying to manage a bunch of disparate limbs that are waving all about and are going in lots of opposite directions, it just has one piece and it's a lot easier for it to stabilize. Now, when we go, uh, when the timer goes off again, back to the first side, still balance, but now up on the ball of the foot. So we are upping the challenge rating pretty significantly. And everything that I said in that first section still holds with the recognition that this is a much more intense balance. It requires a lot more strength in the ankle. And so you, see, you can see that I too cannot maintain it for the entire time. So when I feel myself about to fall out of the position, I try and control bringing the heel down. I readjust, I reset, check in on the stabilizing muscle groups. They are still really useful. Uh, another tool that can be helpful for this one in particular is finding a single spot uh, ahead of yourself, all right, other side, on the floor and staring at that spot, all right? So this is a very common trick um, for dancers in particular. You know, if you're doing something that requires a lot of balance or is, uh, has the potential to make you dizzy, trying to find one consistent, unmoving space on the floor or wall ahead of you um, and just focusing on that can help you to keep a little bit more uh, stabilized. All right, when the horn goes off again, we go back to that first side and now we are moving, rocking back and forth, up onto the ball of the foot and then back onto the heel, okay? So it looks like this, up on the ball, back on the heel, up on the ball, back on the heel. So just this one side and we are rocking back and forth. That core engagement is more important than ever because now we are moving back and forth between two different balances and both of them don't have a ton of surface area for the balance, you know? Our heel, not that big. Uh, the ball of our foot, a little bit wider, but still not that big. So having that core engagement helps us to control the rest of the body so that our foot and ankle are, all right, other side, are as focused as they need to be on the movement. Up on the ball, back on the heel, up on the ball, back on the heel. When you rock back on the heel, do not feel like you need to try and keep a totally straight position, okay? So, you absolutely can let your butt sort of come out behind you, all right? That's what I'm doing. I'm not trying to keep a straight line through my torso, all right? But I'm focused on the balance. All right, when the horn goes off again, one more thing, both feet on the floor, rock back onto both heels and stay balanced on those heels until the timer goes off. So we balance in place as long as we can. When you feel like you need to, you can 
Shift around, still on your heels. All right, and then try and take that balanced position again, and then let yourself shift. The main thing, not letting your toes come down to the ground, okay? So we're focused on balance, we're focused on core engagement, our shins are getting in a, in, introduced to the party, we are breathing, we are balancing, we've got 10 seconds to go, and so try and hold that balance as much as you can, as much as you can, and breathe, and rest. Oh, wow, good job, everybody. Okay, okay, and yes, you can stand, you don't have to be cross-jacking. <laughs> and, oh, let's do some stretching, I think. So let's take our feet about hip width apart. I'm gonna take my glasses off of this. So we have a nice, strong, stable position. Let's do some neck movement first. So let the chin drop down to the chest but keep everything else upright. And then roll the head to one side so the ear is pointing down towards the shoulder, then back down through the center and to the other side. And we'll just go back and forth and back and forth. And the more you do it, the more you will probably feel your neck loosen and be able to drop the ear a little closer to your shoulder. All right, back to the center. Roll back up, then look to the side over one shoulder, back through the center and to the other side. All right, and then just going back and forth and back and forth. Ah, hair is tickling my face. All right. And then back to the center. And now we're gonna drop that ear towards the shoulder again. We're gonna take that same arm and place the hand on the side of the head. And I'm not actively pulling the head. I'm just resting the arm on it and letting the added weight intensify the stretch along the scalenes, okay? So nice deep breaths, trying to make sure that the other shoulder stays nice and stable and is not pulling up towards that ear, okay? Then release the hand and head back up to the center. Then to the other side, same thing. There we go. Oh yeah. So just really breathe into that stretch and feel yourself sink a little more deeply into it. Okay. And then up. And now we're going to drop our chin back to the chest. And on a count of eight, we are going to roll one vertebrae at a time down towards the ground until we are folded over at our hips and our hands are either on the floor or as close to it as they can get, all right? So starting with the chin of the chest, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And when you get down there, Shake your head out a little bit just to make sure you're not clenching your neck muscles. Make sure you have a little bit of a bend in the knees and they're not locked in place. All right. And let's just let our spine sway from side to side. Okay. There we go. All right. And now, 
Let's take our hands behind our ankles. You don't have to apply a lot of force, but just try and pull your torso a little bit closer to your thighs. You're going to feel the intensity in the hamstring stretch ramp up quickly. So remember to keep breathing. Remember to shake your head out every once in a while so you're not clenching muscles. Okay. And we can let gravity, and this is one of the few places where gravity actually gets to lend a hand. All right. Oh, okay. Now on an eight count, four counts to bend the knees all the way down and four counts to straighten back to this position. Here we go. One, two, three, four, and up, five, six, seven, eight. Again, one, two, three, four, and up, five, six, seven, eight. Shake that head out again. And now take your hands to the opposite elbow, so now gravity really gets to step in. And you can hold that position or you can introduce a side to side rock in the spine just to lower some of the intensity of the stretch in the hamstrings. Remember to keep breathing. All right, and let those hands come down to the floor. We're going to bend those knees to a 45 degree angle and then roll back up on an eight count, one vertebra at a time. And when you get to the top, just hold. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Stand right there. Don't adjust your clothes. Don't adjust your hair. Don't shift position. Take deep breaths. Feel the height in your spine. Feel your blood rushing back out to all of your limbs. Feel rooted into the ground. You're breathing. You are steady. And you are ready for whatever comes next. And move, move your hair out of your face, shake out a little bit. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good class, everybody. Oh, it's good to go back into class. It's good. I'm glad that I taught today and didn't spend an hour ranting about the state of gun control in America, which to be fair, I could just spend entire streams uh, ranting about that particular topic. But, you know, I think that my, my value is in helping us to take care of our health and our fitness so that we have the energy, the strength, the stamina, the power to get out there and address the myriad of injustices uh, that surround us every day in our societies. And I want to do that. I, I think it's a really valuable thing. I'm really happy that y'all <clears throat> have uh, chosen to join me on this particular journey. And uh, <laughs> you're ridiculous. <laughs> Mm. All right, my friends, I'd say that we had a good class. Oh, and a nice stretch, nice stretch, nice calf awareness. I hope you're aware of your calves. Uh, don't forget, you can always stretch out your calves uh, after class, especially if we do that. Um, it's intense. They deserve a little TLC. But uh, yeah, so... This was the first uh, class of the week. We have, well, not three. Uh, we have two classes remaining this week. Tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. Mountain Time is Jump Around, our weekly cardio class. Friday's class is canceled. 
uh, as I will be getting poked with a needle uh, to protect myself from COVID-19. Uh, so I will be posting a link to one of my functional home fitness VODs so that you can still do class uh, even if I am not streaming. Uh, but then Saturday morning at 9 a.m. is the weekend kickoff. And I think it should happen unless I have a really bad reaction. I should at the very least teach class. I may not do the whole class. Um, I'm gonna, you know, try to remind myself to be very kind to myself as my body, uh, you know, deals with vaccination. But um, I am expecting to teach on Saturday morning and I'll obviously let you know as soon as I can if that changes for some reason. Um, but yes, please join for any or all of the classes. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All of those handles will be in my end cards, but they are all variations on Blanche Case Fitness. My YouTube channel is where I upload all of the VODs from these streams, so you never have to miss a class, even if you can't make the live cast, so definitely head over there and subscribe. If you want to help support me financially in making these streams, I do have a coffee account for one-time donations at Blanche Case Fitness. Uh, you can also subscribe to the channel now. We are a Twitch affiliate. Uh, so if you have the means and the desire to support me in the longer term, subscriptions are very, very helpful. And if you want to help keep growing this channel, growing this community, then please tell your friends, loved ones, coworkers, anyone looking for an awesome class. I stream four days a week. We have a great community here. We've got lots of fun stuff planned. April is going to be a super fun time um, with our programming and whatever pithy name I come up with for it. Uh, so yeah, bring more people to the party. It's a good time over here. Um, make sure to finish your water and then refill it and keep hydrating yourself. Make sure to eat some food, start replenishing those glycogen stores, especially if you are planning to come to class tomorrow. Take a good shower because you deserve it. And uh, I will see all of you back here tomorrow. Mwah. Have a great night.